All right, now we're in uh, chapter 12, chapter 12, verse 1, in John, chapter 12, verse 1, in John. All right, then Jesus, uh, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, uh, where Lazarus was, was which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. So this is six days before the Passover, before he raised our Lazarus from the dead. This is, this is kind of going a flashback. We're going backwards in time right here. God can show you whatever time period he wants to show you. He's omnipresent. He's an amazing God. Okay. Now, uh, verse 2. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. So, Jesus, Martha, and Lazarus were all at this supper eating together. And I think that uh, Mary was here as well. So all of them were eating together at the supper. Then took Mary a pound of ointment and spikenard, very costly. So this, this ointment was very costly. A lot of, it cost a lot of money, this ointment, very costly. So she probably needs to make sure she doesn't waste it, correct? She probably wants to make sure she doesn't waste it because it's very expensive, it's very expensive right? And anointed the feet of Jesus. Well, she did not care that it was costly. She did not give a crap. And wiped his feet with his hair. And wiped his feet with her hair. That's what she did. She wiped his feet with her hair. Can you imagine doing that? Like, just wiping someone's feet, especially in that time period. They don't have cars. They don't have shoes like we have today. They have sandals. Maybe no shoes at all. And just walking around on dirt every day. His feet are probably extremely dirty. Extremely dirty. So the fact that she was, she was willing to pour ointment that's very expensive. And wipe, wipe it off with her hair. That showed that she did not care. She just did that for Jesus because she loved him and she knew who he was. And now, then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, we got the fire here, we got the devil horns, we got the S with the little lisp tongue. Snake here. Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? So he's saying, like, bro, why are we wasting this oil? Why are we wasting this atonement when we could have sold it? We could have sold it for money and given it to the poor. But, bro, he don't care about the poor. He don't care about the poor at all. He just wants the money. Well, how do I know this? We'll keep reading. This he said, not that he cared for, for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. So he was a thief. He wanted the money for himself. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. So Jesus is saying, bro, the poor, the poor is always going to be here. You, you always have the poor. But Jesus, he will be gone at some point. Jesus will be gone he will not be on this earth like today. He's not on the earth today. He will die. He will die. He will die. And then go back. Die. And then go back. Up to heaven. He'll go back up to heaven. But the poor. The poor will stay. On the earth. So. Yeah. Stay on the earth. So the poor is going to be here. But Jesus, he's going to die on the cross and then go, go back up to heaven on the right hand. The right hand of the Father. 
All right, so let's keep reading here. Actually, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 15.11. Deuteronomy 15.11. Deuteronomy 15.11. Deuteronomy 15.11. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. So the poor, they're never going to cease. There's always going to be poor people. Always. Uh, therefore, I uh, command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. So, yeah. So, it's saying that they will never cease. They'll always be there. But Jesus and John is saying that he ain't going to be here. He's going to go back to heaven very soon. Okay, now verse 9, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Uh, but the chief priests uh, counseled that they might put Lazarus also to death. What the heck? So the, the chief priest wants to put they want to put Lazarus to death also. And they have no reason why. They just want to put him to death for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. So many of the Jews believed on him. So you, we can see how there's a lot of people in this time period that ended up believing in Jesus, but were not disciples. So there's some people that say that, oh, you have to be a disciple to be saved. And that's not, that's not true. You can be a saved person, but not a disciple of Christ. I highly encourage people to be disciples. I highly encourage people to read the Bible, pray to God, flee away from sinful things. I, I highly, highly recommend people do that. But if I think that every single person that gets saved is going to be a disciple... I mean, it's, that's not biblical. If you read the Bible, there's a whole bunch of people that were saved that were not disciples. Do you really think that Lot was a disciple? Do you really think that Saul was a disciple? I mean, I mean, some people will say that Saul's not saved and he's in hell. When that's a very bit, there, that's a possibility. We don't know. But there's a lot of people that were godly people in the Bible that did some pretty messed up things and did things. You're like, oh, a disciple would never do that, right? But yeah. Well, uh, okay, let's keep reading here. Let's go down to verse 12. On the next day, uh, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosea, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a... Actually, whoa, 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 let's, let's slow down here. So, so Jesus, let me erase this because I need to show this. So Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. Jesus is coming. He's on a donkey. Okay, he's on a donkey. If you want to call it the biblical term ass, that's fine. I'm going to call it a donkey. I'm going to call it a donkey. So he's on a donkey. I mean, dang, I, I got to draw a donkey. Dang it. So he has a donkey here. He has a donkey. I just drew really badly here. Dang. And they're saying, Hosanna in the highest. They're saying, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus is on this donkey. He's supposed to be king of kings, lord of lords. But most of these people are probably like, bro, what the heck, bro? This is supposed to be king of kings. It's supposed to be lord of lords. This is supposed to be the almighty God, and he's on a donkey? What? Bro, I don't want, 
I don't want to, I want to serve somebody that's going to come and like destroy the earth. I don't want to serve somebody that's just going to be in a donkey. Right? Well, that's Jesus' the second coming, not his first coming. It's the second coming is when he's going to destroy all the evil people and rate and take all the good people and together and them having their earthly king on, kingdom on the earth the millennial reign that's the second coming not his first but i don't th- i don't think they knew that in this time period i don't think they knew that there was going to be a second coming when they did say they did ask jesus about the new the end of the world right so i know we do have palm trees here a bunch of palm trees. Hosanna in the highest. He has come to be king of Israel, bro. King of Israel. But remember, the last video, the last study, king of Israel. Uh, the Jews were saying, whoever, whoever sees Jesus, bro, take him. He, we're, we're killing him. We're killing him. But he's supposed to be the king of Israel. Okay, let's let's go to Psalms one eighteen. Psalms one eighteen. Psalms one eighteen. And if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and go to Zechariah nine as well. Uh, Psalm one eighteen. If you wanna go ahead and go to Zechariah nine as well. So Psalm one eighteen and Zechariah nine. Uh, so Psalm 18, we're going to go to verse 25, verse 25. Verse 25. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send thy prosperity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of, our, of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. So that's what they're saying in here. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's prophecy and and uh, uh, Psalms. If we go back to John twelve, go to verse uh, fourteen. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, "Fear not, daughter of Sion. Uh, behold." Thy king cometh sitting on a ass's colt. Now go to Zechariah. Zechariah 9. I'm going to try to get there for you. Zechariah 9. Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and uh, riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, and the full fowl of an ass. So there you go. You know, you see that this is prophecy that this person that's going to come, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. So the king is coming. He is just and having salvation. He has salvation, lowly and riding upon an what ass, a donkey, like here, Hosanna in the highest, and upon a colt, the fully of an ass. So that's exactly what happened, fulfilling prophecy in Zechariah. Jesus did. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified. Then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. Then the people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. So People heard that he did this miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. And now, 19, the Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, 
the world has gone after him. So they're, they're saying that the world is going after Jesus. The world is going after Jesus right now because of what he's done. So the world is going after Jesus is, this, is what's happening. After. After Jesus. And you might think, well, no, that can't be right because the world hates Jesus. The world doesn't like Jesus. Actually, that's not true. Because if you really think about it, every religion has Jesus in it. Every religion has Jesus. Uh, even there's a whole bunch of Christianity that has Jesus. If you ask anybody, do you know who Jesus is? They're going to say yes. And they're going to talk, talk to you about Jesus. But when you say, oh, Jesus is God. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Jesus resurrected from the dead. And he is your salvation. Then people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. No. That's not my Jesus. There's a lot of G there's a lot of false Jesuses out there, so be very careful. The world, the world want they want Jesus, bro. They want him. The world wants Jesus, but you got to get the correct Jesus, and the correct Jesus is in this book. The Jesus full of grace and mercy and love. That's the Jesus. All right. We're going to stop right there. All right, let's go to a word in prayer, a word of prayer. Our Father, Abba Father, we come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, the propitiation for our sins. We come to you, Lord, to confess that we have done wrong against you, Lord. Uh, we have not uh, done the things that you've called us to do. So we rely on you to help us walk in the Spirit, Lord. We rely on you to uh, help us read your word, discern it. We thank you, Lord, for being God of gods, for being Lord of lords, for being good, Lord. If you were not here, if you did not exist, if we did not have you, we would not be able to do anything. Everything I do is because of you and is not because of me. Lord, let me glorify you and let the people watching this video glorify you as well, Lord. Let us all be children of God, waiting and hoping for the day of salvation. Thy salvation is great. Thou salva thou, thy salvation will come. We are saved, we are being saved, and we know that we will be saved in the future. And let's pray the prayer at the end of Revelation, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.